Welcome to the Survival of the Fittest contest in the Life Engine. It's been a while since I've made Life Engine content, so this video is also a community update. All of these creatures were submitted by folks on Discord and have been designed to kill everything else. Here are all the names of the creatures, and below are the users that submitted them, including me. George Bush is here, the resemblance is uncanny. These two are basically duplicate mirror images of one another. Lots of interesting stuff here. Now, I ran one of these contests before, but with unnatural creatures, so everyone's submission was just a purple pixel, and it was really obvious what was going on, and everyone loved it. It kind of sucked, so this contest is for natural creatures only, just vanilla life engine organisms, and it looks a lot better. So a few rules. No mutations, so nothing can evolve. Movers can produce food. There's no population limit. After 6,000 ticks, the species with the highest population wins the round, and we'll do three rounds with random starting locations each time. So let's do it! We're off to a strong start. A lot of creatures, including mine, are moving producers. They have lots of green producer cells and orange mouth cells that let them make and eat a ton of food and create really dense, packed populations that can smother other species. However, you'll notice that those dense populations are being eaten up by the small moving predators. The predators also produce food, but they can't form as dense of populations, and yet they destroy those dense populations of their competition. And now you can see that they've paved the way for the purple armored species to spread. And it paused right at tick 6000. The winner is Ball from Rain. It's this heavily armored moving producing species. Congrats. Let's move on to round two. Now pay attention to the previous winner, Ball. It's actually trapped in its starting cell by the food. It can't eat its way out, and it has to wait for other species to break in. And it's starting to get smothered. until eventually the predators arrive and save it. And because it's so armored, it's safe from predators and it's able to survive with them. Right, rounds over. This time, Blinker won. That's this simple shrub thing over here. It doesn't even move. But if we let it run a bit longer, literally just a few ticks, Ball overtakes it. And it's becoming obvious who really won in the long run. Blinker is getting eaten up by predators, and Ball just keeps spreading. But technically, round two goes to Blinker by Alpha222. All right, round three. I'll be quiet for this one.
Okay, it's pretty obvious who won this one. Ball wins the contest, two out of three. Congratulations, Rain, very impressive performance. Second place, I guess, technically goes to Blinker for winning a round, but I really think that Multicross, this predator that's coexisting with Ball, deserves recognition. Maximal Mega Minks made it, and it is the most successful predator, and I think has the second highest population. It's actually fascinating to me that Ball won, because in a 1v1 with many other species, it would have lost. I'll be honest, I thought I had this in the bag. I had evolved my creature overnight, and I thought it was super robust. Ball gets smothered by my creature and others that outproduce it. But the combination of Ball and Multicross clears out the competition and allows Ball to dominate in the long run. I'm not sure you can quite call it symbiotic, but there is some kind of mutualism going on here. Very cool and very unexpected. Congratulations, Rain, and thanks to everyone who participated. Apparently, Ball was originally going to be named Fullerene, after the chemical carbon structure thing, so there's the inspiration. You can open this Battle Royale world from the Community Creations window up here in the top right, and you can play it yourself. Ball is featured there as well. Okay, now time for some community updates. Sorry it's been so long since I've done one of these. I've been very busy doing very important things. <laughs> Let's see some human art. No AI images here, everything's made by some awesome humans. The past year there has been a ton of stuff posted by this guy, Asdarcho, although there are many others. I think Asdarcho is a starting artist and I love the stuff they make. They've kept the server alive by posting, I think, literally hundreds of drawings of dinosaurs and bugs and fossils and other stuff. Here's some of my favorites. They've, like, invented their own alternative evolutionary history, which I like very much. There are other great artworks. Here's some other favorites from that channel. I love this stuff. Keep it up, y'all. I'm really sorry if I missed something you posted. Please don't be discouraged by it. Just keep making stuff. Okay, finally, let me introduce you to Bob. Bob is a big, beautiful boy. Graceful elegant, thriving. Here he is. He has 10,783 cells, so big that loading him up will take a few seconds. And he was evolved completely naturally. He was not manually created. Here is his natural environment. I call it Bob Breeder. It has really weird evolution controls. I think it was run for hours and hours and hours to produce Bob. Destroyer Ad created and posted this world, although I think many people were involved in figuring out the process. Unfortunately, a lot of that history has been lost. But in this world, I call Computer Zoo, some history is preserved by Maximal Megaminks. This is a bunch of simple binary logic machines built by various users, mostly Maximal, I think, and it records how most of it was done and who did it. You interact with the machines by placing food on these red killer cells where food is one and no food is zero, and food activates the eyes of the organisms and their behavior can be used for logical operations. Lots of cool things here, and the magnum opus is this binary adding machine. You place food for each bit, and the machine adds the bit strings up. Really cool. I love seeing how people come up with these weird organic computers. I wonder what else you could make. Here's a world called Huggers. I just think this one's cute. And here's a couple other cute creatures. This is called DNA Trap. It looks kind of like DNA and acts like a fly trap that attracts prey with food and then kills and eats it. And this one kind of looks like a tropical fish with crossed eyes. Well, there you go. Thanks everyone for making art and stuff for the life engine and playing in the competition. That was a lot of fun. Now, I'll be honest, I don't have any major plans or updates for the life engine, but I will occasionally do stuff like this. So keep playing around with it. And if you make anything cool, post it in the server. I see a lot of dead channel comments in Discord, but the channels are not dead, just dormant. I keep an eye on them. All right, well, I have some Minecraft stuff in the works, so stay tuned. Peace.